to the regularly scheduled Board of Education meeting for Monday, May 20th, 2024. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones. And Daisy Troop 50525 is going to join us in the meeting. Our pleasure to leave it. So if you want to stand in front of the screen here. Welcome to uh, what I think is probably your first school board meeting. So, and I understand that most of you go to Plymouth, correct? And somebody from at one one from Adams, not here tonight. One from Carp, one from Adams, two from Adams, and any other schools? One from Carpenter, maybe. Okay. Well, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, before we get started into our normal agenda tonight, I think it's appropriate for us to stop and say thank you to our community. Um, on May 7th, as you know, we had a special election for our operating millage renewal, and i proud to state that our community overwhelmingly supported our 10-year renew our tenure renewal, so thank you. This is the uh, fourth time since 1994 that our community has supported our uh, students in this way, and it was approved about 6,500 uh, yes votes to about 1,500 no votes. So thank you very much to our community and our taxpayers. It means a lot. Um, <clears throat> with that, John, will you take roll for us, please? Absolutely. Uh, President Rausch? Here. Vice President McFarland? Here. Secretary Hatfield is here. Treasurer Lauterbach? Here. Member Blazy? Here. Member Ringgold is not here. Member Horowitz. Present. All right. Agenda item number two is the consent agenda. So item number 2.1, our approval of the minutes from April 15th budget workshop regular meeting and then the April 15th closed session in your board packet. Item 2.2, the below staff are being recommended for hire as listed in your agenda packet. Item 2.3 is an employee leave of absence request as listed in your agenda packet. Item 2.4, the below staff have announced their resignation on the effective dates listed in your agenda packet. 2.5, our approval of the payment of the school system's bills for the month of March 2024 as listed in the check registers. <clears throat> prepared by Ms. Holderby in the total amount of $8,473,906 is recommended. The distribution of obligations by fund is listed, is included in the documentation. <coughs> and then finally, item 2.6 approval is requested to authorize legal payments to the below list of professional legal fees to Thrun Law Firm PC for $862.50, dated April 18th, 2024. Take a motion to approve the consent agenda. Yeah. Support. Motion by Lauterbach, support by Hatfield. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the consent agenda, items 2.1 through 2.6 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item three are presentations to the board. Uh, 3.1, Ms. Miller Nelson. Good evening. I'm gonna ask all three of our shining stars to come up and stand with me at the same time. Come on up. This is our grant team. You've heard about them in previous presentations uh, and board discussions and we're here tonight to honor them as our shining stars. I'm going to read a little bit about each of you and then brag about you as a team. We'll start with Kim, because she's closest to me right here. 
Uh, Kim joined our MPS team in 2022 as a continuous improvement and state and federal programs coordinator, which is the position she currently holds with the district. She holds a teaching certificate in elementary K-5, all subjects, K-8, language arts, and 6 Eight science. Kim earned her master's degree in elementary reading and literacy from Walden University and her Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education and Administration from Northern Michigan University. Then we have John McClelland. Hi John. John's just back there in the business office every day uh, running that tape uh, on his adding machine. John joined uh, MPS in 2017 when he was hired as the manager of fiscal services the position which he currently holds here in the district he earned his bachelor of accountancy from walsh college of accountancy and business administration as well as an associate degree in applied science from oakland community college and then we have Lori holderby Lori joined our team here at MPS in 2016 as the Director of Fiscal Services, which is the position she still currently holds with the district. She studied business administration and accounting at CMU and at the University of Michigan Flint. This is our grant team. And I'm just going to throw Brian in there, even though he's over there. He's always a shining star, as we know. Uh, the grant team, uh, wow. A lot of work over these last few years from the start of the first Esther grant that came our way all the way through to till today when we continue to find out about these other little grants that are coming our way. We realized we needed to form a grant team not only to handle the amount of work and the complexity of all of these grants and how they wove, they began to weave together, but really because we wanted to make sure that we had checks and balances in the decisions that we were making. So this grant team worked tirelessly to ensure that our supplemental funds were quickly put into use and aligned to the needs identified by our representative teams, which you'll hear a little bit about later tonight. The complexity of this task is notable as each fund came with separate rules, regulations, applications, and strict timelines. Collectively, they have dedicated hundreds of hours to really maximizing the use and impact of these funds. Most notable is the careful and strategic planning that has afforded our district the opportunity to continue, and in some cases, you'll hear tonight, even increase initiatives that we've put into place to combat learning loss, to support and enhance academic growth, as well as overall well-being. We have been audited a few times already on these grant funds, and I'm proud to say that this team, along with Brian uh, and our other friends in the business office, we've come through those with flying colors, often with those folks from the state and feds questioning how we're doing so well because they find so many concerns in other districts. So that's a real testament to the teamwork, the collaboration, our attention to detail. They work behind the scenes, uh, not asking for lots of accolades, but they absolutely deserve our recognition tonight because the work they have done has allowed us to make such a positive impact on the student staff and families of our community. Congratulations on being shining stars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lori, <laughs> don't leave. John. And you too. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. S step over here. Can you get? The, did you get a good shot of those three? Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Congratulations. Normally our special gift to the Shining Stars is that they can exit. However, they're going to be sticking with us for the next part of our presentation, uh, which really Kim and Brian are leading, but we hope John and Lori will chime in if needed. One, while that is queuing up, I just want to add on to the Shining Star accolades. You know, when I, I think the first time I met Kim was in an FFO meeting and you were working on a grant. And what really struck me was you were working on a grant for something that our team 
our administrative team and our building principals were already working on because it was student focused first. So our team had already focused on what the student needs were and focused on the student first and then you went to secure the grant. It wasn't the other way around, meaning that we always put the student first and then found money to figure out how to pay for it. And I thought that was a real testament to how we worked as a district. So thank you. So Brian, 3.2 grant update. Thank you, appreciate it. It's great to have such a big audience this evening. I know that they're here just for this presentation and how blessed they are to be able to hear about ESSER funding. But um, truly, it, it is a, this is a culmination event um, for our grants team um, at the end of this funding. And I, I always have uh, Mr. Blazy in my ear every single time because I know that you've been asking about are we going to have the funds to be able to sustain these? Are we doing the right research, as Phil always says, to make sure that our program evaluation is aligned to what the needs of the students are? And so this phenomenal team um, that we recognize this evening, when Penny said hundreds of hours, that's with a capital H. Um, these are the unsung heroes of the Midland Public Schools that allow for these phenomenal opportunities to be able to have the academic and social emotional impact on the absolute very most important thing to all of us here in this room, and that's the students sitting here. Um, so while this doesn't seem like it's going to have much fanfare, I really hope that it does because this is something that's truly exciting for us. So um, at the budget workshop last month, I said to you that you were going to hear a little bit more in depth and detail about the expiration of our ESSER funds and also about the continuation of the process that we have gone through to be able to determine what initiatives are going to go forward. So tonight's going to really be um, a multi-tier explanation to you this evening. It is going to be a bit of a history walk because the past four years have really been a blur um, in navigating all of the grants that have come at us. It's also going to be an explanation of the evaluation process we've gone through. And then I'm going to talk finances a little bit as well about what that looks for us in the next two to three years and what initiatives that we've gone through. So Kim is going to take the first part of this presentation where she's going to talk about the history, the process, the evaluation, and then I'll talk a little bit more in the end about the finances associated. Okay, good evening. Um, bear with me as I maneuver my bifocals and running the sh slideshow, um, but hopefully with my printed copy, it'll go smoothly. So here we go. Um, okay, so like Brian said, um, we're just going to take a little bit of a journey walk back to um, 2020, 2021, when the district first received and, and across the um, country, we received funds from the federal government to help us um, mitigate the challenges faced by uh, the result of COVID-19. So our initial funding, um, all of these funding streams actually were meant to be one time. Um, they were supposed to support specific needs. We needed to gather feedback from our stakeholders and then um, implement the programs as we see fit. This next slide just shows the initial funds that the district were did receive. Um, so you'll see ESSER 2 um, at the amount of 2.8 million. That fund had an expiration date of September 30th, 2023. And so we have spent all of that funds to date. Um, then we received ESSER 3 funds at about $6.4 million. And we have an expiration date on those funds um, this coming September 30th, 2024. And Midland also received an additional supplemental fund, um, 11T equalization funds, um, at the rate of $1.9 million. These funds had specific um, requirements on how we could spend these dollars. So the funds could only be spent on a certain um, demographic of student, and certain percentages needed to be spent on programming during the day, certain uh, percentages had to be spent on programming after school and then we also had to spend another percentage um, specifically on summer programming so again um, the deadline for the 11t fund is coming up here at and at the end of September um, 2024 as well so once we realized the funds that we had we knew we needed to quickly gather our teams of uh, building administrators and teacher leaders school improvement team uh, members and held stakeholder input 
um, events where people were able to um, share their feedback and their comments and help us paint the picture of what our needs were across the district. This next slide just shows a summary um, a result of those stakeholder input, input sessions, um, highlighting the specific areas around social emotional learning and academic support, um, not only um, during the school year, but after school hours during the summertime, um, looking at our curriculum, understanding that we needed to um, uh, repair some of the HVAC systems at Northeast. Um, and of course, we had some credit recovery and online learning opportunities that were also um, deemed to be necessary. This next slide just summarizes the supports that we uh, felt were necessary to implement. Did I skip a slide? Elementary, thank you. Uh, some specifics here at the elementary level. We really wanted to focus on English language um, literacy and supports, so we knew we needed to, um, I'm on the wrong page, we needed to look at our uh, literacy curriculum and make determinations on um, improving our tier one literacy across all of our elementary schools. We knew we needed to have summer learning programs. Um, we wanted to increase the amount of support offered to students during the day through para-interventionists. Um, these folks were trained and monitored by um, building administration. Uh, we knew we needed to have literacy coaches to help us implement that new literacy curriculum. This slide shows the needs that were um, raised up at the middle school level. Um, these activities are, were meant to not only support academic support, as you can see in the seminar classes for English language arts and math, um, but again also our summer learning and after school learning programs, as well as uh, student support specialists um, to help support our students that have uh, extra social emotional um, needs as well. This last slide shows um, similar uh, middle school supports offered at the high school. So you'll see again seminar classes that were offered at the high schools to support our math, um, math programs. Again, the summer learning program, after school program. Uh, social emotional learning specialists, we had one at each school. Um, and our student support specialists worked directly with students um, needing that additional help in supporting their um, social emotional needs. We also added electronic learning facilitators as we knew more students were needing to um, be out of school due to uh, various re reasons related to COVID. Then we came to um, the implementation and, and just ongoing monitoring of all of these programs, which was quite a task, um, I will say, but I feel like it was something that we all look forward to, our monthly meetings where we gathered, um, we reviewed the supports that were happening in each, in each building, we talked about um, maybe some challenges, and we always celebrated the successes that we had um, at each meeting. This is just a sample of the ongoing monthly monitoring um, template. So we aligned all of our supports to our continuous improvement plan. Um, each building um, had their own tab. And while we, we met, we talked about everything and we um, documented that as we went. This is my one of my um, points of pride for our team that monitoring plan the implementation and monitoring plan we spent a lot of time making sure it aligned with implementation science that we were following a deliberate process so that spreadsheet you saw that had a bazillion tabs and you just saw a screenshot we actually were really intentional to say this is what the gold standard for this uh, evidence-based practice looks like here's how we're going to implement that to reach the gold standard, here's what success will look like and how we'll measure it, and then that monthly monitoring meeting, we revisited that to make sure that we were on track, and if we needed to course correct, if something wasn't quite going the way we had planned, then that was an opportunity for Kim as she took over those meetings to help those building principals make some adjustments so that we could still uh, get the best outcomes we could. So this was, um, it looks simple on paper, but it's, 
hours and hours and hours. Jen and Melissa were part of that work too, just really making sure we were dialed in and being intentional as we implemented these activities. Thank you for that, Penny. Um, okay, so this slide again just uh, is another um, slide to show our intentional evaluation process. So a, a template was developed that was um, used by each program or by each building um, and for each program that they implemented. Um, we wanted it to be data informed, and we also developed a uh, effectiveness rating score. Um, and we plan to make adjustments if necessary. So how did we do? Here is the uh, rating scale that we used. So you can see a one, it was, uh, the practice was deemed to be essential and must continue. Um, a rating score of a two means that we felt that there was emerging data, um, promising practices, but we maybe need a little bit more time to maybe um, determine overall effectiveness um, long term. Three, we felt the, the practice was neutral. Um, and four, we decided uh, would be, should not continue. So we want to continue the programs that are effective moving forward. Um, after all of the COVID relief funds are all finished. Um, so this next slide will show just a summary of the scores um, for many of the programs. So the Retiree Intervention Program, Academic Para Intervention, Extended Day, our Learning Coach, um, English, English Language Arts Seminar, Math Seminar, SEL Supports, Student Support Specialists, and our School Resource Center um, programs. So all of the supports, uh, for the most part, showed that they were uh, essential or emerging, meaning that they needed a little bit more time um, to show uh, true effectiveness. Um, except for the extended day tutoring, you'll see there uh, rated a score. Um, that, I feel like, was a bit of a challenge for the schools. There were very specific parameters that the students um, had to fit into in order to be eligible to participate in um, the Sylvan or the IEE programming. And then on top of that, the student had to be available after school, and the families had to, we had to figure out lots of different barriers. So we felt that um, for a number of reasons, our after school programming was not as, success as successful as we had hoped. Um, just continuing on, this is just another um, slide to show some of the results, same, same information from the last slide, just kind of highlighting a few that we really feel like we're in that um, almost essential to we really, really want to keep these programs going next year. Um, an example of an area where we felt we needed to maybe change or tweak it a little bit or modify um, one example I can mention is our retiree intervention program. We're really being an intentional um, as we move into next year and in making every effort to align the amount of support that is given per building to the needs that that building is, um, shows. We want to make sure that the um, number of students, um, the number of hours are tied to the number of students that show some gaps in order to accelerate their learning and get them back on grade level. Okay, so this slide looks a little bit similar to one at the beginning, um, with the exception of 98C in the last column. Um, this is just an example of how the state of Michigan um, decided to repurpose some state ESSER 1, ESSER 2 dollars um, in order to give school districts another opportunity to, to, um, to reap the benefits of those funds and not having to give the money back to the federal government. As a result, there were a number of different categorical funds that had been made available to us over the last couple of years. One is that 98C, um, and that fund they had a deadline of September 30th, 2003. You can see the total was for $390,000. Um, with those funds, we were able to pull some of the supports that we were um, funding in ESSER 3, freeing up some of the ESSER funds, and then we were able to support that same need with a uh, categorical fund that had a, uh, a shorter timeline.
and the most exciting part of the presentation. Let's talk about the dollars. Um, I, I've been presenting to you long enough now, five years in this role, to know that you really don't want to look at the details in these and you just want to hear what it means. Um, this is a repeat slide from my budget workshop and I'll, I'll sum it up for you. If you can sort of laser focus your eyes into the yellow portion, about two thirds of the way through my budget workshop presentation, I explained to you that something happened to Midland Public Schools in the middle of our ESSER 3 planning. Everything that Kim had talked about, our comprehensive needs assessment was in. We were implementing all of the initiatives. Our HR team did a phenomenal job and got all of these in place and rolling. And then the state started to exponentially increase the amount of categorical dollars that were coming into Midland Public. Categorical dollars are other grants that came in. At that time, thank you for the advocacy, 31A for Midland Public became fully funded. It changed our funding from almost 700,000 to nearly $2.8 million. We also got an additional categorical. It's called 31AA, but it's social emotional learning and school safety money. On top of that, another grant called 31N6 or social emotional support dollars came in and has doubled pretty much in the past three years. We as a grant team behind the scenes, as each of these dollars came up, had to make strategic decisions. And this is where I know eyes are gonna start rolling behind me. Because every single time one of these would come up, we had to make decisions. Should we keep it in ESSER? Should we move it to 31A, 31AA, 31N6? There's all kinds of others that 98C, my kid's back on track, the list goes on and on and on. And every time we would make a strategic decision to do so, that caused these people to earn their Shining Star Awards tonight, because every time I did that, they'd look at me and go, okay, Brian, and I'm sure they went back to the office and said some words that we cannot repeat this evening because that requires the hundreds of hours of work. It's journal entries, it's paperwork, it's account codes lining up to it, but we did all of those for a strategic reason. It should not surprise you at all that when you were looking at Kim's slides, that a large majority of these fell on our internal Likert scale somewhere between one and two. One means cannot live without it, has to continue on. We knew this going in that when you put some of these nice things in place, everyone will say you can't live without them. But remember, two was the data is emerging. We need to keep this going for a little more to see if it's having the true impact. So a vast majority of our initiatives were falling between a one and a two. We were picking this up as the initial dollars were coming in. So we made the strategic decisions to not add additional initiatives during those times to use these dollars in real time and strategically defer our revenues so that we could sustain the initiatives that either we knew were essential or needed a little bit more time to show that they were having an impact and effectiveness. So bottom line, in this slide, the strategic decisions that were made have afforded us for the opportunity to not only continue but also to enhance some of the supports that were given. The only reason I put a snapshot of that crazy slide in there is we have developed a three-year fiscal plan to be able to fund with deferred revenues in each of these individual categoricals a vast majority of the initiatives that, put in place, that we put in place. Here's some highlights for you. Not only are we gonna sustain our literacy coaches, we're gonna double them. Um, we're going from one literacy coach for every two schools to one literacy coach for every single elementary school because the data has showed that we've needed and we have the revenues to be able to do so because of the strategic deferments. We're maintaining literacy coaches at all of our secondary schools. A lot of acronyms coming at you. Social emotional learning specialist, student support specialist, student resource centers, which is alternate discipline and also our resiliency programs, our RISE program in all of our schools. In addition, you guys have heard repeated presentations about summer programming. Our summer school we've put in place at all of our schools and the effectiveness that it's had, we're gonna continue all of those summer programming and also strategic individual tutoring. In addition, we're gonna continue the math seminar programs at our secondary levels. Again, the strategic use of the deferred revenues and the movement of those funds has allowed us to be able to do it. Without naming specific school districts, I'm sure you've seen headlines of people that are facing a fiscal COVID cliff. Um, not only do we not have that cliff, but we have the ability to enhance and continue some of the programs that we've done. Now, I wanna say this clearly. This cannot keep going forever. 
I repeat, it cannot keep going forever. But we do have a strategic plan to sustain these for the next couple of years and to keep the very, very detailed and strategic evaluation process going of these initiatives. And in another two to three years, we'll have a different set of data. And that data will then allow you as a board to make strategic decisions of what of these initiatives have had the impact that we've wanted to have and what initiatives should sustain and which should drop off. At that point, because you have been phenomenal fiscal stewards on behalf of these students, you have a fund balance in which you will be able to make strategic decisions on what programs that you would like to be able to keep, even if that means a period of a couple of years of deficit spending. That is okay to do. You've built up a healthy fund balance to be able to sustain initiatives that you know are having an impact over time. It allows you to make decisions that are not knee-jerk reactions, but decisions that can also be funded through attrition of other programming, attrition of staffing, and it is a great and luxurious position to be in as a board to be able to make impactful decisions that are not knee-jerk, that are based on data. And so that is credit to the team that's sitting behind you and also to you as a board for being good fiscal stewards and building up a very healthy fund balance to be able to help sustain these initiatives over time. So with that, you will get a budget that's going to be presented to you in June. That budget in June is going to include the initiatives that we've talked about this evening. There are thousands of lines behind all of those that show which of the grants that those are all going to. And we also have behind the scenes a two to three year sustainability plan for those initiatives as well too, to help us afford a bit more time to measure the academic impact of what those programs are. With that, we'll wrap up on our end and happy to entertain any questions or comments you have with knowing that another presentation is coming to you in June that will include some certain components of this. I had a question about the 31 AA looks like a declining amount. Is that going to sunset or is it just going to keep declining? Such is the wonderful world, world of budgeting um, right now without knowing what's coming. We are forecasting in our budgets that it will be halved, cut in half by 50% next year. And the following year, I'm not counting on it. Um, we've heard this signal. It was in the executive that way and the House and the Senate have differing amounts. I'm betting that we're gonna have the funding at reduced levels um, and that being cut in the future. It's a part of our plan. It's integrated into what our fiscal plan is. We're counting on that happening. Um, what we're seeing, and I don't want to take any of Penny's later thoughts in the board meeting away, but when we look at the Consumer Revenue Estimating Conference um, and look at those, we're largely looking at more of a tempered growth within the state aid budget. We're looking at rates that are somewhere predicted between the two and 3% increase. Categoricals are easy places to cut for legislators because they don't get the fanfare that others do. And that categorical at the state right now is funded at $310 million. That's one of those that if it goes away, really wouldn't get all that much attention as would a cut in the foundation allowance, which is why I'm always doing this and saying, beware the categoricals board, because those are things that are easy come, easy go. And this is one of those that we are predicting is an easy go. And within two to three years, if it's still here, I'd be shocked. Um, and it's one of those that we're gonna have to plan forward and really truly prove if the data is showing it, if it's something that you as a board wanna to commit to into the future. Okay. So do you put, stand on that topic then? Because that was a really good question. Does 31 and 6 fall in that bucket then? That could go away? Crystal ball, and I know I'm being recorded. Um, if I have to take my crystal ball and or the magic eight ball and flip it over, um, and the grant team can chime in here, 31 and 6 just seems to keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I'm building that um, at increased levels every single year because I have not seen it even mentioned as being cut. Okay. Um, so that is a funding stream that we believe is going to be strong and continue to be. Just not if you. Yeah. Because if is the simple math then, Brian, that our ESSER funds plus 11T were 11.2 million over three years. In general. So that's th roughly 3.6 million a year to fund the programs that we just saw. And then 31A plus 31N6 would about equal out the so if you, if you think of 31A and 31N6 as categoricals but continuing, yep. then from a revenue standpoint, we've 
covered our basis on the ESSER funds. Close. Um, okay. But also know that we have a bubble of deferred revenues that we've been holding that will fund some of these in addition to. In addition. And, and that's why you mentioned doubling literacy coaches and enhancing some of the programs that's correct. as well. That's correct. And so okay. we're trying to get a strong impact up front, and hopefully some of these initiatives over time um, are no longer needed. We hope that the recovery is complete um, by that point and again if we can sustain things that are going into the future the other thing to Phil, is that there are so many unknowns in the budgeting process when one categorical goes another seems to pop up um, this is just the world that we live in you get different categoricals there's 35 a5 which is literacy initiatives and there's again my kids back on track and it just seems that these things are always coming about we joked within our team what are we going to do once all of these ESSER funds are gone? Well, <laughs> the categoricals just keep on coming, so there's always something that keeps us busy along the way. Um, there will not be in two to three years that rolling bubble of deferred revenue. It's going to right-size itself, but by the time three years gets here, who knows? Four years ago, we would have never imagined that we'd have been in this spot. So the program effectiveness score is just pull on that thread a little bit. The the scores, either the one, most of them range between one and two. Those are backed up by the spreadsheet that the screenshot of the spreadsheet we saw. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Within that spreadsheet, there are probably both qualitative and quantitative metrics. Is that true? Yes. Oh. yes there. there are. Okay. Uh, we looked at student data for the activities where that was relevant, and that's really where a lot of the conversation came that we can see we're on the cusp of something and it just needs a little more time. We did perception data for um, many of those as well. Uh, we looked at uh, attendance, behavior, relevant to the school resource center, depending on what it was, and then we really asked the principals to pause and reflect with their MyKIP teams, their mm -hmm. continuous improvement teams, about what this meant for them, what would happen if this were not in place, are there other better solutions, and we actually also asked them to pause and just think about if the needs have changed. When we did this initial needs assessment uh, several years ago now, you know, we had a certain sense of what the needs were. A lot has happened since then. So it was really a culmination of all of that that led to the score that you saw. Okay. And then NWEA as well as part of the... Kim, you might take that one, or Jen. I think we plugged NWEA into several of those yeah. well, along with state data. Specifically to academics. Okay. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Anybody else have any other questions? Well, let's, let's just summarize it. I'm really excited to see how many of these programs continue and then also how many of them were effective, but also that we're honest about which ones didn't work. Um, it's really important that we're transparent in what did work, but probably even more important what did not work so we can focus our resources on, on what did work. So, Phil, I'm I'll just pick up from that to say the resources are one part and also to uh, intentionally or strategically abandon things that aren't working because we continue to invest our time and energy in that so it's money as well as time and focus and then free that up to focus on the things that are working it's something we know we need to continue getting better about we do a lot of things we do a lot of things really well and then we have some things that we're just doing so honestly um, to put everybody on notice, it isn't just ESSER funded or previously ESSER funded, it's many of the things we do, even general funded, that we mm -hmm. need to start this program evaluation process with. More on that later. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> I, yep. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. No, 30 minute requirement. Yeah. Almost to the T. Yeah, good job. Except these guys. There we go.
right. you stand for the fun of it? All right. Uh, item 3.3 for action is final approval of Ms. Neller, Mills, Ms. Miller Nelson's contract. Um, so, just to give you a little bit of background, what I did was took our job posting and job description, worked with Thrun, um, took kind of their boilerplate uh, contract, adapted it for what we had structured as a board when we started this uh, superintendent search process and then negotiated the contract that you have in front of you um, for, for consideration tonight with Penny. And she and I worked through this. Um, so I will entertain a motion for approval of item 3.3. I will. Go ahead, John. Support. Support. Motion by Lauterbach. Support by McFarland. Any questions or discussion? Uh, this is boilerplate uh, according to uh, the state educational association. Um, parts of it. Parts of it, okay. Yeah, I mean, kind of the legalese are where we reference specific statutes okay. and those sorts of things. But throughout the process, I had through and involved um, just to double check certain components of it, but then it was obviously yep. adapted for what we, for what we need. Okay. need as a board, um, especially for things like merit pay or yep. new, mm -hmm. right? I think they're much more innovative as a district than what is typically seen in the state. Um, so that's, uh, uh, that's new and different than, than anything boilerplate okay. that the state would see. Okay. So. And where does this put us in terms of uh, uh, compensation levels in the state? Um, well, it's still consistent with what we had discussed as a board, but then I went back and looked at the elite comparison mm -hmm. group data that we had pulled um, when we started this process and still puts us a little bit above the mean. Okay. Um, the mean, when I had pulled it, now this data is a little bit old, the mean just for the base compensation was right at 201. Okay. Um, but then some of the other compensation packages were the other parts of the compensation averaged much higher than this. Okay. Um, so all in total, it, it's still well within kind of the middle of the elite comparison group, which is what we had talked about as a board and consistent with the job description that we had posted. Perfect. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? I was curious, the errors and omissions coverage, um, who, who is covered by this? I mean, this is specifically about the superintendent, but this board, other administrators? This is a great you question. That that, yeah. Okay. So um, I actually had Brian pull the policy because this was something that came up in discussion as officers of the board as well. But we are correct me if I'm wrong, Penny, but all of us are also covered by the errors and omissions um, insurance policy that's referred to in here. So okay. the, the dollar amount, we double checked with Brian that the dollar amount listed in here is consistent with the policy that the district holds for all of us and in pe uh, and for Penny as the, su at, in her role as the superintendent. And for other administrators. Yep. Okay. Good question. But nobody pays their, I mean, we pay the premium for everything, right? Correct. The but district I, I, I think it's fine having it in there. My question was, why do we have to have it in there? We have the policy. We're all named insurers under the policy. I, it seems like we're saying something that we're already doing. True. So I, I was kind of surprised it was there. Fair as enough. long as we got it, then. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. Um, all right. All in favor of approving item 3.3, the superintendent's contract, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries.
Item number four, a request to address the board. Um, I have one name on my list tonight, Mr. Bonadies. Welcome. Greetings and congratulations. You got your millage renewal through earlier this month. I still think it's difficult to call it a renewal when the basis of the hold harmless millage allowance is less than 10% of the authorized level. The following needs to be noted. In 2014, you passed this millage during the November election. I cannot find any notes of when the board decided to have a 2024 millage to be a special election. More importantly, I can find no vote or even discussion by the board for the $100,000 plus in taxpayer dollars to hold a special election versus a free election in August or November. So you are going to start work on a bond proposal for probably 300 or $400 million. I would like to request again that the vote for the bond be at a major election where the public has more than one reason to go to the polls. In 2024, with just this one thing on the ballot and a vote count suppressed by 55% over 2014, you still had 1,500 people take time out of their day to say no. Thank you. Would anybody else like to address the board at this time? Okay. Section five is curriculum instruction and assessment. Uh, 5.1 are the meeting minutes from April 15th subcommittee meeting. Does anybody have those? I do. Brad. Uh, CIA study committee minutes, April 15th. Members present, myself, Ann Horowitz, Jennifer Ringgold, Penny Miller Nelson, Jen Service, Melissa Toner, Brian Bruton, and Jeff Jaster. Joy was also present with Kevin Dodick, Tracy Speaker Gerstheimer, and Tila Sherman. We were at the Building Trades House at 203 Cambridge Street. Um, we started off with our DEI update. An update was provided about DEI activities throughout the district. The 2425 Chromebook sticker project with the theme Better Together is underway in partnership with the Midland County Inclusion Alliance. There are plans for classroom guest speakers on topics related to Arab American Heritage Month and Autism Acceptance Month. A summer workshop is being planned for culture and climate leaders from each school. The Midland Public, Midland Public Schools Building Trade Program Update and Visit. The committee members and the administration toured the Building Trades House and talked with the students and Kevin Dodick about their experiences. This year's project project is in partnership with the Reese Endeavor of Midland. <coughs> Next year's project will be with Habitat for Humanity. Staff development proposals. There was a follow-up discussion about the staff development proposals in preparation for those being presented to the Board of Education. We adjourned at 2.30. Thanks, Brad. Mm -hmm. Item 5.2, um, we heard about these last month as for information, but staff development and curriculum proposals for action. Ms. Miller Nelson. Good evening. Uh, we are back with the same list of proposals for your action tonight. Those are listed in uh, your board agenda. These proposals do represent the needs that have been identified by our staff and reflect both the curriculum and staff development uh, projects that we'll undertake with your approval. We continue to work to align these more closely to our continuous improvement process and our goal areas. Um, these pending your approval will still be subject to final approval of the board. I just want to draw your attention, although not on the agenda, kind of connected back to our grant conversation. We will continue where possible to leverage existing grant funds for some of these projects. We know, for example, that the SIOP training, which is the last one listed as number 20, uh, we can leverage our Title III or Section 41 grant funds, which are specific to multilingual learners. There is a new grant emerging called Title IV Stronger Connections Grant, and we believe the number 13 and 14 on your um, list, the MPS Resiliency and the Central Park Trauma-Informed Practices can likely, um, we can utilize grants for those. And similarly, our Title II and IV, which are grants we've had for years, 
um, that focus specifically on professional learning for our staff, we're going to see where we can plug some of those in there. So rest assured that we'll continue to maximize those opportunities where possible. What is the SIOP one? Yes, it is a sheltered instruction observation protocol, and essentially it is best practices for teachers in teaching students who are learning English, and English is not their first language, but the, the <coughs> strategies are kind of universal and could benefit any classroom. Okay. Good question. Uh, so I'll just add that the total of these you can see on the agenda is uh, $536,993, and again, we'll leverage some grants where we can. Thank you. Take a motion to approve item 5.2. Support. Motion by Lauterbach, support by McFarland. Any further discussion or questions? So 16 and 18 are our heavy hitters, and those are the two-year agreements? Thank you, yes. Uh, thanks for calling that out. We did talk about that last time, that 16 is year one of a two-year cycle, and it estimated to be about that same amount in year two. And then also, um, yes, number 18, the reading and writing project will be a two-year. Number 19, play-based learning, is the second year of a two-year sequence. So we'll be finishing that one out as well. All in favor of approving the staff development and curriculum proposals in item 5.2, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Item 5.3 for action, textbook adoption. Yes, these are back to you for your <coughs> consideration for action. We presented these at the last board meeting. They've been out for the 28-day public review period. We are asking for your action on exploring geography and global issues. It's a copyright of 2024 for McGraw-Hill. <clears throat> and then our U.S. government, American government text by Cengage <coughs> with a copyright of 2022. Thank you. Take a action to approve item 5.3. So moved. Support. Motion by Lauterbach, support by Hatfield. Any discussion on item 5.3? Is there any concern with the older copyright on this? No, so we did sort of dig into that. It's uh -huh. not typical we'd bring you something uh, that's a little older like that, but it is the most recent version from the publisher. And our teachers and teacher leaders and uh, principals are have all signed off that this is the best resource for us. Okay. And if it's American government, I assume it managed to get in the 2020 election. Yes. All in favor of approving item 5.3, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. For information, item 5.4, textbook adoption. Yes, I have for you tonight a few more books uh, for your consideration at the next board meeting. These will be available, as always, for public review. The first one is a resource for our Building Trades and Advanced Building Trades courses. It is the Core Instruction to Basic Construction Skills, and this is from Pearson. Uh, uh, Mr. Blasey, I'll just offer that is a 2021 copyright, but again, it's the most recent version of that text. And this is the text that we are required to have in order for students to prepare to earn their industry certification, which is now a requirement of state approved CTE programs through the Perkins legislation. The next text is for our IBAP advanced physics class at our high schools, and that is Fix Physics for Scientists and Engineers, a Strategic Approach with Modern Physics, from also from Pearson, copyright 2022. Similar reason there for the 2022 copyright. Uh, again, these will be available for review, and we'll bring them back to you for your action at the next board meeting. Thanks. Um, Section 6 is Finance Facilities and Operations. 6.1 are FFO Study Committee Minutes from May 6, 2024. Thank you. Uh, the committee met on May 6th. The committee met on May 6th. Uh, present were Jen, uh, Jennifer Ringgold, myself, uh, Brad Blazy, Penny Miller Nelson, and Brian Brutin. Uh, the first item we covered was March financials. March financials were reviewed. Purchase card and purchase orders over the bid threshold were discussed. The 24-25 budget and corresponding tax rates will be presented for information at the June 3rd Board of Education meeting. 
Two, school aid fund budget proposals. Comparisons of the current proposals were presented to the committee. Three, ESA budget. The administration will recommend adoption of a resolution expressing support of the Midland County Educational Services Agency budget at the May Board of Education meeting. Four, HH Dow boiler replacement. Administration will recommend awarding a contract to replace the boiler system at Herbert Henry Dow High School. Series two energy bond and capital improvement funds will be utilized if approved. Five, fitness equipment. The administration will recommend awarding a contract to replace fitness equipment at both high schools. Capital improvement funds will be utilized if approved. Six, trash recycling bid. The administration will recommend awarding a contract to provide trash and recycling services throughout MPS. Seven, mini splits. The administration will recommend awarding a contract to install mini splits in additional locations at the pre-primary center and in various kitchens throughout MPS. Capital improvement and food service funds will be utilized if approved. Eight, robotics relocation. The administration discussed entering a two-year lease agreement for the former Delta, Sun, uh, Delta College Midland Center located at 1025 East Wheeler Street. Uh, last item, number nine, the Juvenile Justice Center, the JJC program staffing and finances were reviewed. Our next meeting will be June 3rd at 5 p.m. Uh, item 6.2, oops. Item 6.2 for action, the Midland County ESA 2024-25 budget. Brian. Thank you. In certain school districts, the local ESA or ISD will come in and present to the LEA or local board of education what their budget is. Uh, decades ago, the finance committee asked that the finance team represent the board at the ESA's budget meetings and hear that on behalf of the board of education and report back to you. So our finance team did meet with the ESA, went through a couple hour presentation with them and bring back to you a recommendation um, for a resolution to support their budget. Some very high level details from the budget. Um, their general fund and special education fund, their two main components are largely balanced. Um, the general fund balance percentage coming in right around 10% and their special education fund balance percentage estimated to come in right around 17%. Their goals are 10 and 15% respectively, so they're coming in right along those lines. Um, again, both of those budgets are close to balanced. They did grant employees steps and raises at approximately 3%. They did base their revenues off of a 4% property tax escalation rate, and they also do, of note, have a van budgeted at a price of about $50,000. So um, after going through all those lines, we believe that Midland Public is represented correctly within those and do offer a recommendation for the board to adopt a resolution in support of the ESA's budget. Entertain a motion on item 6.2. So moved. Support. Motion by McFarland, support by Horowitz. Any discussion? Brian, just for clarity, as I read through the budget, the, the general fund and special education are restricted funds back and forth between the two? Special education is general fund operates separately. Okay. They don't interplay. And then when they talk about raises, are those one year at a time? or Could, Per their bargaining agreements. So have they future committed to more than one year of raising? Well, I don't know the details okay. of their bargaining agreements. I just know what this year's obligation were. I'm happy okay. to go back and find out the details of those. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor of approving um, the ESA 24-25 budget say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 6.3 for action, fitness equipment. Brian. Thank you. We sought bids to replace fitness equipment at both HH Dow High and also Midland High School as well too. As you saw in the board packet, this equipment includes four treadmills, seven ellipticals, 41 uh, fitness cycles, and two rowing machines. After getting the bids in and meeting with our athletic directors and also physical education teacher representatives, we are recommending that we award this project to Fitness Superstore out of California. The total price for that is $78,058.86. Of note, when you were looking in the board packet, this was not the low bidder, but fitness equipment is a very interesting animal. When you are comparing model over model, 
different warranties, different ratings, all kinds of different uses. Um, and this was the recommendation that came from our teachers and from our administrators for the equipment that we believe is going to work best and also have the best warranty, a 10-year commercial warranty associated with it. So we're we are recommending awarding that project and utilizing capital improvement funds for it. Thank you. Entertain a motion for item 6.3. So moved. Support. Motion by Hatfield, support by Lauterbach. Any discussion or questions? And Brian, this number was all inclusive of shipping costs, sales tax, everything. The only thing that we are responsible for is removal of the current equipment. This is the all-in price in the door as long as our stuff is out. All in favor of approving item 6.3, the fitness equipment purchase, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 6.4, the Dow Boiler, HH Dow Boiler System, Brian. Certainly, um, this project has been a long time in the works ever since some of the issues that we had earlier in the school year. And credit certainly goes to our maintenance team for helping facilitate the design of the bid process for this. We did solicit bids to repair that system, a complete tear out of the system, and put in of all new boilers. Um, you saw the specifications of the project that are included in the attachments. We are recommending awarding this project to Rolls Mechanical out of Fenton, Michigan. The total pricing for that came in at $821,585. And after seeing that pricing, we will be using a combination of the leftover Series 2 and Energy Bond funds for that project. Of note, this was the number two bid. Our lowest bid on the docket did not have the required paperwork and also did not pass our post-bid interviews um, when we were talking about specifications, hence leading to our recommendation of awarding to Rolls Mechanical. Entertain a motion for item 6.4. So moved. Support. Motion by Lauterbach, support by McFarland. Any discussion? Brian, two, two quick questions. Um, first is this is inclusive of, of environmental permitting? Yes. And anything necessary? Correct. And then second, you'll work with, for a consumer's energy rebate? Correct. Good. Um, all in favor of items approving item 6.4 say aye. 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 aye aye any opposed motion carries item 6.5 for action mini splits Brian thank you um, we are looking to add mini splits at various places throughout the district um, a large amount in this project going to the pre-primary center these are going into the classrooms that we are renovating in preparation for additional preschool slots pending what budget comes out of the executive um, and the house and um, the other legislative components. Also, we're looking to put in mini splits in the kitchens at Adams, Chestnut Hill, Plymouth, Siebert, and Woodcrest. Um, these mini splits will help provide comfort to the food service staff. Um, you know that when you're running that equipment in those machines um, and it's running off the centralized system that is a part of the cafeteria and gymnasium, it's just not hitting the mark um, to make sure that those employees are provided with ideal working conditions. So we are recommending awarding this project to Climate Control of Clare, Michigan, a grand total price of $164,830, and we'll use a combination of capital improvement and food service funds for this project if approved this evening. Entertain a motion for item 6.5. So moved. Support. Motion by Lauterbach, support by Hatfield. Any discussion? All in favor of item 6.5, approval of the mini splits, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item 6.6 .6 for action, robotics lease. Brian. Thank you. Um, we are excited to bring this to you this evening. This has been a multi-month venture um, to be able to find a new space for our robotics programs. I think one of the things that you heard as a board when the robotics teams were here was their desire for additional space. And I know that Penny and I certainly heard that when we were out on the information trail for the operating millage as well too. Um, but this also is largely due to us needing to expand within the pre-primary center. So all things aligned, additional space needed at the pre-primary center, additional space needed for the robotics program. So we hit the trail 
and went to find the best space that we possibly could for our robotics teams. And where we ultimately landed, as Mr. Lauterbach said in our minutes, was the former Delta Center, or depending on your age demographic, the former Regina Building. It depends on what you're going to call it. Um, there's still a plaque within there for those folks that remember that from back in the day. But um, our robotics teams are certainly excited for the space. We've had them through there multiple times, and we believe that this is going to provide um, a much more conducive environment to having additional project spaces and collaboration spaces for not only our high school teams but our middle school teams and also our elementary teams as well too. As you saw in the terms of the lease, this is a two-year lease. It has an additional possible um, one-year extension to it. We did not want to commit beyond two pending what comes out of our next pending bond and we can make strategic decisions at that point. So we're recommending your approval of that lease this evening. Thanks, Brian. Entertain a motion for 6.6. .6. So moved. Support. Motion by Lauterbach, support by McFarland. Any discussion? Yeah, I've got a couple questions. So the lease would take effect soon? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay. And what additional costs would be required for us to outfit the place for our use? Dave is working hard right now to get pricing to run fiber okay. into the building for Wi-Fi. Um, the landlord was extremely generous and has left a vast majority of the furniture for us in there. Um, we were able to go through and tag what we wanted to keep and what we didn't, and we're going to be able to bring over our other pieces as well, too. So we will have the cost of internet, fiber, and we also have the cost of cleaning services as well, too. We're setting up a preliminary rotation, and time will tell whether or not that rotation is enough or too much, and we're going to continue to monitor and adjust that over the next school year. And that would be all robotics would be? Housed in this center, yes. Okay. Off Wheeler, correct. Great. Thank you. Yep. Do we need another insurance policy for this? It's been added. Okay. Good questions. Anything else? All in favor of approving the Robotics Center lease? Item 6.6, .6, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, item 6.7 for action, waste and recycling services. Brian. Thank you. Um, we do usually bid our services every three to five years, and we were due to bid our waste and recycling services. We did solicit those bids. We received two bidders, and we are recommending awarding a three-year service contract to GFL Environmental USA of Saginaw, Michigan. Pricing was included in the attachments. These services are paid for out of the general fund, and it is worthy of mentioning um, that by going through GFL, um, this is going to be able to enhance our district recycling efforts in alignment um, with what you are able to do at your home. If you have GFL right now, I call them the neon yellow tops. That's what I have at my home. Whatever it is that you can put in those recycling containers, we now as a school district will be able to do. Um, and that is something where we've largely been cardboard only um, for a long time here at Midland Public. So this is going to be able to enhance our efforts. And we certainly are going to lean on some of the students that have been talking with you out of the Go Green Clubs to be able to help us Good. educate students and to be able to assist us in um, making sure that we are maximizing the efforts through these new services. So we're excited to get moving. Thanks, Brian. Uh, take a motion for item 6.7. So moved. Support. Motion by Horowitz, support by Hatfield. Any further discussion? All in favor of approving the waste and recycling services to GFL, item 6.7, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 6.8 for action gifts totaling $6,000. Brian. As you stated, Phil, um, there is one item that requires you accepting on behalf of the board this evening. That is $6,000 that came through the Midland Area Community Foundation to support both the Midland High and Dow High BPA and DECA programs as they traveled to their state and national competitions. We would request that you approve accepting this gift this evening. Entertain a motion for item 6.8. Support. support. Motion by Hatfield, support by Horowitz. Any further discussion on 6.8? So we have a student that takes after his dad in accounting. Some 
something about <laughs> apples and trees or some kind of saying <laughs> about that. He's, he's a good kid. Congratulations Thank to, you. to Bo. Very proud. Definitely yeah. takes after his mother. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist it. All in favor of uh, approving item 6.8, say aye. 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 Any opposed? I think you're almost off the hot seat, Brian. Okay. 6.9 for information. Gifts totaling $14,556.89. Brian. So for information only, there are 30 gifts this evening totaling $14,556.89, as you stated. And when you survey that list, you'll see that they represent a wide range of items. Lots of them supports for the BPA team, field trips, athletics team, clubs, and even music lessons. And as is tradition, all donors are going to be recognized in the credits of this evening's broadcast and also through board correspondence sent on your behalf. We certainly continue to remain grateful for our community support of our students and our programs. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. All right. Item number seven, human resources. Uh, 7.1 our HR study committee minutes from April 12th, 2024. I have those. Uh, thanks, Phil. Um, we met on April 12th, 2024 at 3 o'clock at the Administration Building Conference Room 9. Meeting participants were Penny Miller Nelson, myself, Ann Horowitz, Jennifer Ringgold, Karen Justin, Brian Brutin, and Jeff Jaster. Agenda topics were as follows. Number one, leave request update. An overview of employee leaves and leave requests were, was provided. There has been an increase in leave requests due to a higher number of maternity leaves and a slight increase in other health related issues with the staff. Number two, staffing update. The committee was updated on the staffing process and timeline for various employee groups. Number three, Midland City Educational Support Personnel Association partnership update. The committee was updated on the status of the partnership with the Masespa including topics discussed at the most recent contract review meeting. Number four, Midland Federation of Paraprofessionals, MFP partnership update. The committee was updated on the status of the partnership with the MFP, including topics discussed at the most recent contract review meeting. Number five, Midland City Educational Association, MCEA partnership update. The committee was updated on the status of the partnership with the MCEA, including the ongoing grievance, grievances and topics discussed at the most recent contract review meeting. Finally, number six, employee attendance. The committee reviewed employee attendance data. The meeting adjourned at 4 p.m. Thanks, Scott. Item 7.2 uh, for information, Jeff. Thanks, Phil. The board and staff extend their deepest sympathy to the following families. Uh, condolences go out to the family of Gary Levite. He passed away April 20th, 2024. Gary was employed as a teacher first at State Street School, Cook Elementary, and then later became principal at Mills Elementary, Longview Elementary, and then finally Chestnut Hill. Gary retired in 2004 with 27 years of service. Um, also condolences to the family of Miss Janet Williams. She passed away April 21st, 2024. Janet was employed as a teacher at Jefferson Middle School for 35 years. She taught math, chemistry, and sociology. Also a cheerleading coach and in her retirement, a bus paraprofessional. Janet retired in 2010 with 35 years of service. And then finally, condolences to the family of Miss Pamela Jane. She passed away April 29th, 2024. Pam was employed as a teacher, teaching second through sixth in multiple schools, including uh, previous Glasgow School, Parkdale Elementary, Windover, Chippewasi, Plymouth, and Sugnet. Pamela retired in 1996 with 28 years of service. Thanks, Jeff. <clears throat> Item 8 is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. Item number 9 are scheduled activities for information. Um, 9.1, I'd like to um, talk to you about just scheduling for June. So historically in June, um, so the, the action item is that we need to amend the, the regular meeting schedule for June. Historically in June, we've always held two board meetings. Um, the first was the truth and taxation meeting and then the second one was the, uh, the regularly scheduled June meeting. 
We were informed by the um, county, Midland County that we would not have our uh, enough information from them to actually set our fiscal year's budget and take action on the summer tax rate by the time our June 3rd meeting rolled around. So then we started talking about when we should hold that meeting. Um, and when we looked at the calendar and the travel schedules and availability of, of various board members, um, we looked at actually just combining the meetings um, on the 17th. The 17th, we weren't going to have a quorum. So I'd like to propose that we do um, the June 3rd and June 17th meeting as one night um, on Thursday, June 13th at 7 p.m. So the meeting would begin with the truth and budgeting hearing followed by public comment. Then we would start um, at the completion of those action items with the, the meeting would transition to the standard agenda, which would include another opportunity for public comment. So it's similar to how we do the um, budgeting workshop in the spring, where we actually have two different public comment periods, we would do the same for June if people are comfortable with that. And Phil, if I might add, then at that same meeting, we will hear the budget presentation for your action and the amendment to current fiscal year yeah. budget. So it will be a, a packed meeting, but one meeting. Yes. And we will also just the other thing of note, the other things on the agenda for that meeting would be um, Penny's evaluation for the 23-24 school year, as well as setting the merit goals for the 24-25 school year. And we'd have the county numbers by then? That's what we believe. We're in, we're, yeah, fingers crossed, yeah. right? Okay. <coughs> and it's to be transparent, the county's waiting in the state, so I don't want to place blame, blame on anyone. There's one report that's a linchpin for us to be able to set up a whole bunch of rates. Um, the minute that the county gets it, they've been great and cooperative with us. They'll have the numbers over to us, but it's looking like right now we're still a week or two out, which doesn't align with that June 3rd timeline at all. Okay, so that's a, that's a big meeting. Do we want to maybe move the time ahead a little bit instead of starting at 7? Was that what it was scheduled? I, I may have misheard you, Phil. Um, said seven well, years. the action item is just to amend, so we can set it for whatever time, start time that the board would like. But the June, I had Sarah pull the board, and we had at least five members that were available for the 13th. We mm -hmm. were not going to have a quorum for the 17th. Gotcha. So, would, um, so maybe, Scott, if you want to, make a motion for um, what time you think would be best to start. Uh, you can make a motion for six if you want. Yeah, six o'clock. Okay. Is that work with everybody? Okay, so I'm- You're I'll not going to be there, right? Correct. If it's at seven, I can be here. I can be back. Okay. If it's at six, that's cutting it really close. So 6.30 work or is that still too close? I will make it. I will join you in progress. I, can, I also can't make probably until. I mean, we can keep it at seven. It's no big deal. I yeah. just. No, I mean, I couldn't make seven, so I will show up when I can. It'll be a little bit later. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let's just, we'll just keep it at seven. Keep it at seven then. Yeah. yeah. That okay. Will, that will put the pressure on Brian to be swift in his. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. All right, so I will. Challenge I will accepted. Then, I'll make the motion. I'll mo I move that we combine the June 3rd, 2024, and the June 17 meeting, 2024, uh, for a new date uh, that is June 13th, 2024, at 7 p.m. Support. Uh, motion by McFarland, support by Hatfield. Any discussion? Um, all in favor of amending 
the regularly scheduled meetings to combine the June 3rd and June 17th into one meeting on June 13th at 7 p.m. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We will update the uh, posted um, meeting schedule on our website and on the, the door out front find this meeting so item 9.2 will be updated item 10 is study study session discussion um, do any board members have any points of clarification or things that they need to raise <coughs> I will turn it over to Penny just two quick comments. I, I echo, uh, Phil, your sentiment and gratitude to our community for that May 7th vote. And uh, just really appreciate the trust that our community puts in us to use those resources wisely. Secondly, congratulations to the class of 2024. We, the next time we meet, it will be after graduation. So an amazing opportunity to celebrate our graduates next Friday at Dow Diamond. I know you all have received some preliminary information about that. We'll make sure you have additional details coming to you soon. Uh, it's been really fun to get out to the schools and interact with this graduating class. I mean, every graduating class is special, but there is something particularly special about this group. Maybe it's because my, it's my first graduating class uh, as, as superintendent. And I just really look forward to the celebration of their perseverance and all of their achievements in a variety of ways. So congratulations to the class of 2024. Congratulations. Yes. Okay. All right. I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Motion by Lauterbach, support by McFarland. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion, or er, meeting adjourned. Perfect. Motion carries. <laughs>